Merry Christmas! And Happy Holidays! This is definitely not definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're a couple of nerds in love that love talking about the Marvel movies, the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the big kahuna! If you really couldn't tell how dorky <laughs> we really are, I mean, come on, the sweaters, they say it all, right? Yeah. Check out these awesome sweaters. Mine says straight out of North Pole. And mine just lights up and looks fantastic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So we go ahead and uh, we developed a scoring sheet so we could properly review and score and therefore rank all of our favorite Marvel movies. You can check out that score sheet down below in the description of this video and uh, fill it out for yourself and you know join in on the fun. Yeah, and then once we have everybody's scores as well as once we've gone through the entire anthology, then we will have final scores for all of these films and your votes will contribute to that final score. Exactly. Now on to our review for Ant-Man and the Wasp. So our first category is lead male and lead female likability. So how well do we like our lead characters? And more importantly, who are they? Okay, so our two leads are Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. So it's pretty self-explanatory there and who their two leads are going to be. <laughs> so what do you have? Uh, I gave them both a four. Uh, you know, I, I like these characters a lot. For our other review for Ant-Man, uh, you can hit the YouTube card and check that out. I actually gave Hope a three in that one. Um, I said she was just a badass, but in this we get more of her personality and that's why I want her as my group of friends. That's what a four is, so four out of four. So I gave Scott a score of four and I actually gave Hope a score of three. I said oh, wow. she's a badass. I don't know if it's like a neediness or like an angstiness about her in this one, whereas mm. in the first one she was just straight up badass the whole way through. She had too many issues. All right, she wasn't enough of a badass to be your friend, but she's enough of a badass to get a three. Yes, okay. exactly. Our next category is lead male and lead female bangability. Uh, you know, how much do we want to get with these characters? <laughs> <laughs> I gave Hope a score of zero. It's nothing personal. I mean, I think Evangeline <sighs> Lilly is gorgeous. Obviously, the Wasp is very sexy. It's just not my cup of tea. Sorry. Uh, I'm sure Evangeline would probably feel the same way about me, so it's probably <laughs> mutual. Uh, and then I actually gave Scott a score of four which is uh, there will be some shower sex, morning sex, thanks, see you later sex. He actually also dropped he for me did. in this one. Wow, he's no longer marriage material. And it's not that he's not marriage material. It's just in the first one, he was he was so wonderful and so wholesome and so adorable that you kind of felt bad giving him anything less than marriage. It was kind of like you, you either marry him or you do nothing with him, but you can't corrupt him. Okay. Um, in this one, I felt like eh, it could be corruptible. <laughs> Uh, for me, I gave Scott Lang a 0 out of 5. Um, Shocker. No, no thanks, I'm good. For Hope, I gave Hope a 4 out of 5. So 4 is this lead to some morning sex, shower sex, thanks, see you later sex. I like the way she teased Scott mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, made fun of him. And I liked her strength, too, so, yeah. So the next category is lead male and lead female relatability. So how much did we relate to these characters? So for me, I gave Hope a score of 3, which is it's the best, and I think we also amended this to say, and worst parts of me, <laughs> at least I think it is. I really related to Hope in her kind of cold, distant exterior when somebody hurts her and, or like, you okay. know, doesn't go her way. Cause yeah, I she can give the culture like nobody's business. I really can. <laughs> when, when people hurt me, I shut down. When she has something bothering her, whether it's her relationship with Scott or her mom or her dad, it's something that's always present and she really can't let it go. And I'm the same way. It's like until I resolve an issue, it's very difficult for me to overlook it or let it go. So I very much related to Hope in her good and bad qualities. I like to think I relate to her in the badass way, so I have to throw something good there <laughs> too, right? Uh, and then for Scott, I gave him a score of two. I said, it's not me, but it could be one of my friends or family. I gave Scott and I gave Hope both a two out of four. Um, a two is that it's not me, but it could be the it could be my friends or family. I um, mean, you know, I think Hope reminds me of you, and then Scott reminds me of uh, you know, a lot of people that I know that are goofballs. So moving on to our villain categories. Now our villain in this was Ghost. And her end goal was to stop phasing in and out of herself. She wanted to heal her body, basically. That was, that was her end goal. She wants to survive without pain. And the yeah. reason that this becomes a villainous end goal is because her method for doing so is to extract quantum energy from Janet, who is Hope's mom. So how many people does the villain's end goal affect? I gave it a one out of five. I said that it only really affects the heroes in, our, in this story. Yeah, I gave it the same score then this means how strong is our villain compared to our heroes, especially since their going head to head seems so isolated just unto themselves. Yeah, I gave her uh, a two out of four. I said that she was equal to our heroes. Uh, you know, she has the training from S.H.I.E.L.D. She went into that kind of whole backstory. And uh, yeah, so that's why I gave her. 
and I had the same score as well. I said she was equal to. Her being able to phase is kind of equal to Ant-Man and the Wasp's ability to shrink, and they mm -hmm. show that in some of the head-to-head -head combat that these guys go up against her with. Next in our villain category is do you care about the villain? I gave this a zero out of four. I said that I do not care about this villain at all, and I think that is a glaring weakness in this movie. Um, the villain was just really weak to me. Uh, you know, there was no, there were, the stakes weren't high in this one at all. We don't like her per se, but I mean, you can't really hate her. You feel maybe a little bit bad for her, but pity is not going to make a great villain. That brings us to villain bang ability. If we don't like her, do we want to bang her? And for me, this was a zero for just pretty obvious reasons. Uh, I actually gave her a one. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, I knew I was, I was going to get crap for this. I get it. It's a one out of five. So one is that, all right, I've had a few beers. Let's do this. Was it the um, accent? I think it was, the, it was the accent. Up next are side, side characters. characters. Sunny, Hank, Bill, Janet, Agent Wu, Luis, and of course Cassie. Hank, Bill, Janet, Sunny Birch, and Agent Wu all got a one for me. I thought they were just there for the plot. And uh, yeah, I didn't enjoy them as much. Hank, Pim dropped down for me, actually. I actually think I might have enjoyed Hank as a person in this, like as a character a little bit more. Um, but I actually had the exact same ones as you had for me. He was he was there for plot. It wasn't that he was necessary for me yeah. to like Ant-Man or the Wasp. Exactly. Um, so for my twos, uh, I got a two out of four. This is just goes to Cassie. She makes Scott super likable, her, her relationship with Scott. My threes went to Luis and to Cassie. I still okay. kept Cassie up there in the humor category. She used to be an MCS. She was your MCS. For the... She was an MCS, yeah. And I just yeah. couldn't bring her down all the way to a two. For me, she still evoked humor and lightheartedness. As well as just heartfeltness, but... Yeah, um, she probably deserved a three. You're probably right. I think so. I gave Luis a three as well. Uh, he, he brings a ton of humor in this one, just like he did in the, in the first. Okay, so next up is the plot. How much did we enjoy the plot? How engrossing was it? For this, I gave it a three. I said it was deliciously unexpected. Um, I don't know if all of that was necessarily the rigid plot structure of this movie, or if it was necessarily like the scenes and the interactions of some characters, some of those little delicious moments that might not be like, oh, it's the inciting incident, or mm. it's the climax of the film, or, you know. But I counted that into the whole plot structure because I think it all goes towards the, the movie as a whole. I gave it a one out of four. I said it was kind of boring and predictable. Uh, I thought the plot was kind of weak. It's just, they, okay, so they want to go, you know, to the micro realm to get Hope's mom back, not and so. they can't because Ghost needs the, needs the lab. And then they steal it back. And then she steals it back. And then you have the black market guy. And, and, the, black mar and then the black market guy wants, wants it. Again, the stakes are very low. Next up is female empowerment. What role do women play in this film? For me, I give it a four out of four. And that's the female lead is a true hero. I think there's no denying that the Wasp is a true hero. And once again, Marvel gets us uh, a villain that is female. This is, I think, the second time they've done that. Um, they gave us Hella before. I liked Hella a lot more than I liked Ghost. <laughs> so I also gave female empowerment a four out of four, though. And that goes entirely to uh, the Wasp. And I'm going to give a little note. That's to Hope's Wasp and the original Wasp. Next up is Soundtrack. For this, I gave it a one. I said there was a cool song or two in there. I actually gave this a zero out of four. Um, I, I didn't think the music was, was very good. This film was very campy, and the music was kind of campy in parts. Uh, and so for me, it just didn't hit on, on those notes. Um, so I didn't enjoy it as much. I, I kind of noticed it, but in, in not the good way. <laughs> on to humor. Uh, how funny was this film? The first Ant-Man was very funny. Unfortunately for me, the second Ant-Man did not Fair as well. This movie didn't take itself seriously, and not in the way that Thor Ragnarok didn't take itself seriously. It was just kind of on the wrong side of not taking itself seriously. But I got a humor score of 25, which is respectable, but it's not as good as, as it could have been. I gave it a score of 30. Um, I think probably some of this was, I think I was laughing a little bit more at some of Cassie's stuff, which is yeah. why she also got into the humor part for me. Uh, so she might be the, the five mm -hmm. joke difference here. I think for me, this movie was more entertaining the first time I saw it in theaters. But the rewatchability on this movie is not high. Next up are visual effects. So for visual effects, I gave this a four. I said that my eyes had some eyegasms. And the reason for this really is the flawlessness that they do the full size to the super sized to the mini sized to the ant sized different visuals with uh, Scott Lang's character and with Hope's character. 
as well as taking us to the quantum realm. I give visual effects a three out of four. I said it's definitely big screen worthy. Now moving on to Love Story. <laughs> Our Love Story is between Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne. For me, I gave it a three out of four. I said I can't wait for these two to hook up and, and get together. Uh, I think one of the w reasons I really got into this was when they were in the van and Hope tells Scott, they're talking about Germany, so Hope says, if I was there, you wouldn't have gotten caught. And there was just the confidence that she had and the swagger that she was saying that and kind of the flirtatious nature. All of a sudden, she just shone brighter in that scene and she just was incredibly attractive. And like I said, the confidence just came through her eyes and her face and just lit up. And I was like, wow, like, that's... That's hot. <laughs> and that's what we needed more of. Like, yeah. I loved that scene with her. And to me, that was so what I imagine Evangeline Lilly's wasp to be. Yeah. To exude that confidence, to have that swagger, but in a very feminine way. I gave it also a score of three. But I think had we seen more of those scenes, mm -hmm. I would have been hooked in to give it a four, which is the highest score for a love story. Yeah. Next up is dialogue. How engaging was the dialogue? Did you notice it? Were there memorable one-liners? Are you going to be quoting the movie? So for me, <laughs> I gave it a two. But she's kind of, when she takes a beat, <laughs> she kind of, that's one of those, you know, it's not going to be a high score. I also gave it a two. Uh, for the same reasons, I thought that uh, the dialogue, there's some quality memorable one-liners in there, but I, it, there was also some kind of cheesy corny bits. Up next are action sequences. So what we do is we, take the number of action sequences in the film, which we said were three, and then we times it by the score that we give it. So for me, action sequences were three out of four. I said that uh, I couldn't believe what I was seeing in a good way, and I wanted more of them. So my total score for action scenes was a nine. So my score was actually the exact same thing. It was a three for action sequences, and since there were three, that makes it nine for a final score on action. I would have liked if Hope had one fight entirely to herself. She starts it with the henchman, and she's really good, mm -hmm. but then Ghost comes along and Scott has to go in and help. And it's like, <laughs> Scott had his own movie, okay? Give Hope at least one fight by herself. She can kick butt. She can handle it. She gets a fight. Get that, Marvel? She deserves All right. a fight. So last is heart. Uh, how much heart was there in this movie? Did it move you? Were you getting warm fuzzies? Did you cry? Did you care at all? Uh, so for me, I gave this a two. It gets warm fuzzies. Um, that is, in large part, again, due to Cassie. Yeah, I, uh, I gave it to as well. I got warm fuzzies. It probably wouldn't have gotten that if it wasn't for Cassie and that scene where she's talking about Scott Lang having yep. a partner. And she's like, yep. oh, I was talking about me. That, that, that's just... And then when she's oh. like, don't laugh. I mean, yeah. just... Wow, yeah. Once again, Cassie's bringing the heart 110% mm -hmm. to this movie. Let's move on to our final scores for this one. Uh, we were pretty in line, so I think they're probably pretty close. My score for Ant-Man and the Wasp was a 79. Mine was an 82. Which brings the total score to an 80.5. So when Scorsese is talking about the Marvel films not having any stakes, not risking anything, telling the same story over and over again, I feel like that this is kind of the movie that he's looking at. Like Maybe he just saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, and that, that's all he's talking about. But if you look at Black Panther, look at Guardians of the Galaxy, look at Captain America Winter Soldier, Civil War, there's a lot of them that have uh, very strong messages and very strong themes throughout throughout the movie yeah. and um, deal with heavier stuff. This one, not so much. And uh, it just it, it just wasn't as enjoyable. And the campy element of this movie yeah. too. I think when Scorsese commented on, on it being like highly commercial tested and mm -hmm. consumer driven, probably is something like this kind of script where yeah. he probably was seeing something where it was like hokey one-liners like this that maybe hit, maybe fall flat. It just didn't have, again, the stakes were lacking in this movie. But mm -hmm. I think what's so great about Marvel and what is the mass appeal for so many people about these films is the fact that they do deal with some heavy issues. And when they talk about Killmonger yeah. and how he was a product of society, it's like there are bigger issues here, issues that we as a society and a culture deal with in real life. But the beautiful part of it is there's a layer of entertainment and escapism put over it so that you can access it. All right, so if you like this video, go ahead and hit us a thumbs up down there below or uh, give us a subscribe so you can check out more of our videos and reviews and, uh, you know, keep up to date and submit your scores. Uh, our score for Ant-Man and the Wasp was an 80.5. But that's definitely not definitive. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Holidays.